Hello and welcome to the 11th edition of the Capital Bowl Update for the 2017 season. I'm Matt Sheeran, alongside me is head football coach Dan Masillas. How are you doing, Coach? I'm all right, Matt. How are you? Doing good. Coach, it was a tough loss on senior day this Saturday and a loss to Adrian College. Sure it was. But what were the positives you could pick out from this game? Sure. Well, like we talked off camera, I think that the thing that I was most proud of our guys, and I tell them that I love them after every game, I truly care about uh, and love all of our guys. I was happy for the seniors. I was proud of the seniors and the fight that we had. Um, certainly, it didn't go our way yeah, in many different parts of the game, offensive, defensively, special teams, calls, whatever it may be. They made some plays. We didn't make some plays at times, but we continued to fight, um, and we didn't give up, and um, we were certainly really close at the end of, of, of making that a one-score game, you know, where you get to the scenario of, of an onside kick, and you maybe have a chance, and uh, I was really proud of, of our seniors and our team that, uh, that we didn't give up and we continued to have that, that fight that you have to, that a champion has. Um, and so that was the, the big positive that pulled out of it, that we pulled out of it, um, is, is to be able to try to play to that last play. Now with the lightning delay pushing the start of the game back three hours, do you think this had any effect on the team? Well, it, it certainly has an effect on everybody. Uh, you know, what we talk to the guys is, um, they're, they were in the same uh, boat as we were. It was something that uh, you know I had never been a part of um, something that long. Usually it was a, a you know a short 45 minute to maybe an hour delay. And this was three hours to the point where you know we had uh, to come up with a, a, a true plan. Whether you know you, you go back and you second guess things and did I mismanage it? I may have. Um, it was it's something that you don't have written down. And you don't have set in your head. And, um, all that kind of good stuff. So it certainly had an effect, but it had probably the same effect on, on both teams. And we were both on a, a level uh, playing surface when it, when it comes to that. It's definitely interesting when you have everybody um, in the stadium in your, uh, in your facility and, uh, for, for three hours. And uh, you can't keep your football team cooped up in one tiny little spot for three hours. So uh, we had to adjust with the fly. We have a saying around here, you adjust with poise. And uh, you find a way to make things work. And uh, that's certainly what we had to do. Now, Cornelius Saxon broke another record, seems like a broken record, sure. says, right, for point. receiving yards in a single season. And he's now on verge of becoming the first count receiver now with a thousand yard season sure. in school history. Does that shock you given what he's done this year? Uh, no, it doesn't. I mean, Cornelius is, uh, like we've talked in the past, has hit a different level um, of play for the most part. And that's you know, the standard that we talk about from our receiving core. And um, he's been a very consistent, explosive receiver. Um, this entire year that speaks to his work ethic, um, what Coach Rumsey's done on the offensive end schematically. Um, and so he's, it, it doesn't surprise me uh, at all. And we can continue to get better, and, uh, and he's going to have to be a big player this week to, to be able to have us uh, have our offense move number one, um, put points on the board number two, and win a football game. And uh, he's been that guy for us consistently this year, so no, it doesn't surprise me at all. Now the hurry up offense was something we saw from the comments when they were down to Adrian this past Saturday, yep. and it kind of helped claw the comments back into the game. Yep. Is this something that maybe used down the road as just part of his offensive scheme, considering it success? It brought the comments back. Sure, I think that was a situational thing when we decided that at that point that was the best thing to get our offenses, um, you know, moving the football and consistently moving the football. We had been up and down all day long. Um, that's. Uh, the tempo is uh, in our offense. We're no huddle team, and um, you know we haven't hit the point where um, where we've done in the past. Where maybe it's the, the, the quote unquote organ type of, of tempo where you're going as fast as possible. Um, that's something that we practice uh, every week, and, and we can use certainly in certain situations, whether it is two minute or to get a kind of a kickstart. Um, something that we always have and we work on um, if it's, if the situation is right. Now, turning our attention to Saturday's game, you wrap up the season in conference play with a game against Trine University, who sits at 9-0 overall, 5-0 in the mind of play. What challenges come with playing an undefeated team with one game to play in the regular season? Sure. Um, Trine in general is a great challenge. Um, it is a great challenge. We're going to be ready. We expect to win. We prepare to win. Um, that's what we do. That's the level of, of play that we have. Um, here at All that College with our All that College football team and our program. Um, but they are, they're a great football team. They're extremely well coached. They're explosive. Um, you have, you know, momentum's a big thing in college football. And uh, Trine certainly plays with a lot of confidence. They've built momentum up as the year's gone on. And when they've uh, been punched, quote unquote, in the mouth, they've responded really well. They responded, um, you know, two weeks ago versus Adrian. Uh, in a 
tight game. Um, so it's going to be a great challenge um, for a team that's, uh, that's really well coached. They play great football, um, and then they're playing with a lot of confidence, no doubt. Now, through nine games, trying to show them that they can move the ball effectively on the ground and through the air, averaging just under 500 yards of offense a game and 341 yards of offense on the ground. Additionally, the Thunder have a high-powered offense, scores a lot, evidenced by scoring, which lead in the MIAA averaging 48 points per game. Yep. How big of a test will this be for the Iowa defense? That is, it will it'll probably be, and, and it will be the biggest test of the season. Um, they're an extremely well-balanced offense. Um, when they throw the football, they don't throw nearly as much as uh, they may be done in the past. Um, that's, that's credit to their coaching staff of adapting what they do around their personnel. Um, when they throw the ball, they're very explosive with it. And they're explosive in general, whether it's at the running back position, the receiver position, or the quarterback position. Um, so we're going to be our best, uh, our biggest challenge of the season. And we'll be ready. And that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to prepare and, and uh, we're going to be ready to rock and roll. Now, senior quarterback Evan Wise has been outstanding in the starting role this season with a 17 to 2 touchdown interception ratio this year. And he's rushed for 800 yards as a quarterback as well. How much of a threat is Wise to this kind of Sure. Well, he's, uh, like I said, they're very well balanced. And just like in the offense, it's centered around the quarterback position. And they've done a really good job as a, as a coaching staff um, using his talent because um, he's a very physical runner. He's explosive. He's a tough, uh, tough player. You can see that how they how they play. And then they build that game off of him with, uh, with their running backs and then some of the play action that they have off of that with their explosive receivers. So he's, uh, he is the center, just like any other quarterback, is going to be the center of the offense. And you're only as good as your quarterback um, in, most, that's, in most cases. That's why those guys get paid the $20 million a year in the NFL. Um, so he's, uh, he's the center of what they do, and he presents a great challenge, um, both with his feet and then his arm. Yep. And now running back Lamar Carswell has rushed for more than, he's rushed for 1,161 yards this season and has 21 rushing touchdowns and is one of the premier backs in the MIAA. How big of a challenge is this kind of defense face now with Carswell, traditional wise in that Sure. Game? Well, you can't go key on, on, uh, on one guy, um, whether, no matter what scheme uh, they're doing. It seems like Lamar's been around for forever. He's been a guy that's played a lot of football. Um, over the years, starting uh, from his freshman year, and he's certainly explosive. He, the, the challenge with with him is you gotta you have to tackle out in space. Is they're gonna be able to put him out in space um, in the run game? He's extremely explosive. Maybe the fastest guy in the conference. Uh, I'm not sure. We got some we got some uh, pretty explosive uh, players in this conference, and, and a couple on our team too that uh, that, that could present challenges. But uh, he he's one that you have to to tackle. Um, if you miss a tackle, he can outrun angles. Um, he's been able to improve that he's been able to do that throughout the season. Now defensively, China's allowed an average of 291 yards of offense, 177 through the air, and 114 on the ground. What are the Comets going to have to do offensively with the ball against tough defense? Sure, they're, they're a tough and well-balanced defense. Um, they're, they're athletic. They play a lot of guys up front, and they play hard. Um, again, you know that, I know that, coach, uh, that coaching staff well, um, and so they're really well coached. They'll run around and hit you. Um, they're going to be aggressive. The challenge for us is to be able to execute, all right? And I think that is a focus on what we do, um, where we have to play pitch and catch in the passing game. We can't have drops. Um, we got to be able to get man for man to who we need to to be able to, to, be able to, to block in the run game. And then we're going to have to make guys miss too. The, uh, um, just like uh, in any scheme that you're doing, that uh, eventually guys are going to have to make plays. And, and that comes down to, to uh, just basic execution for us to be able to move the football, move the chains, um, put the ball in the hands of Now the Comets go on the road to Fred's owner Athletic Stadium this Saturday to face Trine University. How tough will it be for a Comet football team to come out with a win against a team in an environment such as Trine? Sure, that's a great uh, playing environment. It's, uh, it's a fun one to play. When you get, to, you get a chance to play um, you know, a team that's, that's won at least a share of the conference, um, is going to the playoffs. It's a really good undefeated team. That presents a challenge in and of itself um, to be able to go into the stadium where they, you know, they, they average quite a few from an attendance standpoint. Um, it's a fun environment to go play college football in. Um, that presents a challenge in and of itself. Um, a challenge we'll be ready for, um, but that we're excited for uh, for this last game for our seniors and for our program. Now, final question: With it being the final game of the season on Saturday and the last game. For many, for all your seniors' careers, 
Do you get emotional as a coach with the fact that this was the final time you coached these seniors in yeah. the battle? Oh, man, as you probably got to know me a little bit through the coaching career, I'm a very emotional coach. Um, sometimes I get really excited, whether it's on the sideline, and then there's other times I hit the other end of the spectrum, too. Um, but like I said earlier, I love our guys. I, I love coaching here at Olivet College. I believe I'm here for a reason. I believe we're here as a staff. Now, for a reason for the type of players um, and young men that we have, we have the, the privilege of serving and coaching and teaching every day. Um, so it is absolutely going to be emotional for a bunch of guys that uh, we've been able to coach with for four years. And we spent a lot of time together. Uh, we call it our band of brothers. It's the most important thing in, in our program is the relationships that we build that last beyond football. And knowing that um, you've had a bunch of players, 16 seniors that have been here for four years and have sacrificed everything for you and you for them. Uh, it is an emotional day. It's the last opportunity you have as that group, as a band of brothers, to be able to compete together. Thank you, Coach Moose. Good luck this week. Thanks a lot, Matt. That does it for this week's Comic Football Update. You can tune in this Saturday at 89 1 the 1 WOCR or go to WOCRFM.com to catch all the action as the comments stick on the Triumph Thunder at the Fred Sloan Athletic Stadium in Angola, Indiana for the final game of the season. Kickoff is at 1 p.m. Eastern Time with pregame starting at 12.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Be sure to come back next week for the next Common Football Update as Coach Musselix and I will discuss the game against the Thunder. In the meantime, you can also get all the latest information on all of Olivet's varsity athletic teams on our website, www.olivetcomets.com. You can also follow and like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram by searching for at Olivet Athletics. You can also follow WOCR on Twitter and Instagram by searching at WOCR891. For head coach Dan Musellowitz, I'm Matt Shear. We'll see you next week for the next edition of the Cabinet Football Update.